This is a planet rendered completely in Python without hardware acceleration. It's procedurally generated and easily configurable. Here is how I made it. First, we needed a system to render 3D graphics. So we start by creating an algorithm for drawing a circle. We need to do this so we can create a normal map to turn this from 2D into 3D. Making a fake normal map is pretty easy. You can get the x and y components of the vector by finding the relative distance from the center of the circle, and we use Pythagoras' theorem to determine the z component. This is what I was going for, and this is what I ended up with. As you can see, it's a one-to-one -one recreation without the need for any advanced 3D math. Using this newfound normal map, we can create a lighting effect using the dot product between each normal and a light source. Now that we have the 3D part down, we need to make this look like a planet. To start, I used a 3D simplex noise function in Python to generate terrain using the coordinates of the normals. The terrain is looking a bit like shit right now, but if we multiply each input value into the 3D noise function and layer it onto the original, the terrain becomes more detailed. One thing that planets are well known for is their ability to rotate, so let's implement that. To start, we need to create a rotation matrix by multiplying the rotation matrix of each axis, then multiplying it by the normal coordinates of the circle to get the rotated coordinates of the sphere. And if you want to sharpen up your math and computer science skills to create projects like this, then you should check out Brilliant.org. Brilliant is the home to thousands of lessons in AI, data analysis, computer science and math, where you learn through hands-on activities. The lessons are laid out in a uniquely effective way, allowing you to build an understanding behind the material rather than just memorize it. Brilliant hones in on your problem-solving abilities, which will make you a better thinker in the process of learning. They also help develop a strong daily learning habit using their bite-sized lessons that can be completed at any time of the day. Brilliant has a growing library of programming lessons that help build the foundations for you to become a better programmer. You can try out everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days by going to brilliant.org slash gpopcorn or by clicking the link in the description and you'll also receive 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now this is already looking like a planet, but it's still missing a few things. Specifically, clouds. Clouds are relatively easy to implement. We basically use the same algorithm for drawing the planet, but we scale it up a bit and only draw pixels if it surpasses a value in our simplex noise function. This yields some pretty nice results, but I'm looking for a bit more. By shifting the values of the noise function every frame, we can create an effect where clouds shift and move around, just like they do in real life. As you've probably noticed already, the frames per second have dropped drastically, and my CPU is on its last legs. Now of course, whenever this happens in other projects, I just lower the resolution and carry on with the cool stuff. And so that's exactly what I've decided to do. Now with that issue sorted, we can work on the cool stuff again. To make the clouds appear more real, I wanted to cast shadows from the light source onto the planet based on the cloud's position. To do this, I added the normal of the sphere onto the inverse of the direction of the light multiplied by the difference between the cloud's radius and the planet's radius. I then normalized this value and put it into the cloud's noise function, and darkened the pixel based on the presence of the clouds. Of course, it may not be 100% accurate, but it looks pretty good for all intents and purposes. Lastly, I wanted to add some life to the simulation by adding city lights on the dark side of the planet, much like those that can be seen on Earth. I tried using white noise for the lights, but it appeared too flickery because the math isn't precise enough. So instead, I used simplex noise again, which looks a little clunky, but it's better than nothing in my opinion. Now this creation needs to be named, so I decided on the astute name of Planetary Interactive Simulation System. And that's the project. I tried using a few different color palettes and seeds to see what could be made of it, and it's pretty configurable. In the next video, I intend to make a game using this, so drop some ideas in the comments section and I'll see what I can create.